Hi, thank you for joining me today. We're reading through A Course in Miracles, uh, the main text. And today we're going to read from chapter 19, The Attainment of Peace, section seven, the second obstacle, the belief the body is valuable for what it offers. Um, this will be an interesting chapter, I think, or section. The second obstacle, the belief the body is valuable for what it offers. We said that peace must first surmount the obstacle of your desire to get rid of it. Where the attraction of guilt holds sway, peace is not wanted. The second obstacle that peace must flow across and closely related to the first is the belief that the body is valuable for what it offers. For here is the attraction of guilt made manifest in the body and seen in it. This is the value that you think peace would rob you of. This is what you believe that it would dis dispossess and leave you homeless. And it is this for which you would deny a home to peace. This sacrifice you feel to be too great to make, too much to ask of you. Is it a sacrifice or a release? What has the body really given you that justifies your strange belief that, it, that in it lies salvation? Do you not see that this is the belief in death? Here is the focus of the perception of atonement as murder. Here is the source of the idea that love is fear. The holy messengers are sent far beyond the body, calling the mind to join in holy communion and be at peace. Such is the message that I gave them for you. It is only the messengers of fear that see the body, for they look for what, they, what can suffer. It is a sacrifice to be removed from what, is it a sacrifice to be removed from what can suffer? The Holy Spirit does not demand you sacrifice the hope of the body's pleasure. It has no hope of pleasure, but neither can it bring you fear of pain. Pain is the only sacrifice the Holy Spirit asks, and this he would remove. Peace is extended from you only to the external, and it reaches out from the eternal to in you. No, let me, let me read that again. Peace is extended from you only to the eternal, and it reaches out from the eternal in you. It flows across all else. The second obstacle is no more solid than the first, for you want neither to get rid of peace nor limit it. What are these obstacles that you would interpose between peace and its going forth but barriers you place between your will and its accomplishment. You want communion, not the feast of fear. You want salvation, not the pain of guilt. And you want your father, not a little mound of clay, to be your home. In your holy relationship is your father's son. He has not lost communion with him nor with himself. When you agreed to join one another, you acknowledged this is so. This has no cost, but it has release from cost. You have paid very dearly for your illusions, and nothing you have paid for brought you peace. Are you not glad that heaven cannot be sacrificed, and sacrifice cannot be asked of you? There is no obstacle that you can place before our union, for in your holy relationship I am there already. We will surmount all obstacles together, for we stand within the gates and not outside. How easily the gates are opened from within to let peace through to bless the tired world. Can it be difficult for us to walk past barriers together? when you have joined the limitless. The end of guilt is in your hands to give. Would you stop now to look for guilt in your brother? 
Let me be to you the symbol of the end of guilt and look upon your brother as you would look upon me. Forgive me all the sins you think of the Son of God committed. And in the light of your forgiveness, he will remember who he is and forget what never was. I ask for your forgiveness, for if you are guilty, so I must be. But if I surmounted guilt and overcame the world, you were with me. Would you see in me the symbol of guilt or the end of guilt, remembering that what I signify to you, you see within yourself? From your holy relationship, truth proclaims the truth, and love looks on itself. Salvation flows from deep within the home you offered to my Father and to me. And we are there together in the quiet communion in which the Father and Son are joined. O come ye faithful to the holy union of the Father and the Son in you. And keep you not apart from what is offered you in gratitude for giving peace its home in heaven. Send forth to all the world the joyous message of the end of guilt, and all the world will answer. Think of your happiness as everyone offers you witness of the end of sin and shows you that its power is gone forever. Where can guilt be when the belief in sin is gone? And where is death when its great advocate is heard of no more? Forgive me your illusions and release me from punishment for what I have not done. So will you learn the freedom that I taught by teaching freedom to your brother and so releasing me. I am within your holy relationship, yet you would imprison me beyond the obstacles you raise to freedom and bar me and bar my way to you. Yet it is not possible to keep away one who is there already. And in him it is possible that our communion where we are joined already, will be the focus of the new perception that will bring light to all the world contained in you. This is a great section of this chapter, The Attainment of Peace. Uh, I think what I want to add to this is just the uh, realization that, that you aren't your body, right? So the second obstacle, the belief, the body is valuable for what it offers. There is a, um, a balance that we have to come to when we realize that we're not our bodies. Sorry about that. We're not our bodies. Our bodies are the housing of our divinity. And so our bodies, though, have wirings that make them have minds of their own. And so this is what enlightenment really is about. It's about coming to the realization that you have housing that has needs and wants and desires, and, uh, and you are not those things. You are the divinity that is animating the housing, the body. So uh, I, I believe that that's uh, a part of what is being said here, even though it doesn't say it very clearly. The belief the body is valuable for what it offers. It's a realization that the body has a mind of its own and, um, and that there's more to you and, and that you can not be bound by the desires and the, and the programming of your physical form. So I hope that makes sense. If you'd like additional support, you can reach out to me, 907-351-3003. Texting is the best way. You can also message me through YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, my website, lindalamp.com or lindalamp.shop. Namaste and much love.